Welcome to Behind the Lines, coming to you from the socialist Marxist lines of Washington State. It's a crazy liberal petri dish for the rest of the country, folks. Stay up to date with all the great news right here. Today is Thursday, March 11th, 2021. And this is breaking news from American Military News. The House has passed a gun control bill expanding background checks to private transfers. The House voted in favor of the Bipartisan Background Checks Act of 2021, which, no surprise, is sponsored by a Democrat from California. This is H.R. 8 originally written in February of 2019 uh, and also referred to as the Bipartisan Background Checks Act of 2019 sponsored by uh, Representative Mike Thomas, again, a California Democrat. So basically, uh, this passed with a vote of 227 to 203 Uh, that would criminalize private gun sales conducted without a background check. The bill states it shall be unlawful for any person who is not a licensed importer, licensed manufacturer, or licensed dealer to transfer any, to transfer a firearm to any other person who is not so licensed, unless a licensed importer, licensed manufacturer, or licensed dealer has first taken possession of the firearm. Democrats overwhelmingly supported the bill, with 219 voting in favor of the legislation. Eight Republicans also voted in support of this bill. One Democrat voted against it. This bill was voted on in February 2019 as well. There were eight Republicans at that time who supported the bill, who voted yes for it. Um, I don't know which ones voted yes for it this time, but I would assume it's the same eight. And um, that would be Buchanan and Diaz, Ballard, and Mast from Florida, Fitzpatrick from Pennsylvania, Hurd from Texas, of all places, King from New York, Smith from New Jersey, and Upton from Michigan. The National Rifle Association is warned against the anti-gun measure claiming a universal background check uh, system would act as a gun owner registry. NICS would become a gun owner registry if all firearms transfers were subject to NICS checks and the FBI retained records of approved checks indefinitely, both of which gun control supporters have opposed. The NR's website states such records would include information currently maintained on Federal Form 4473, documenting the identity of the firearm purchaser and the make, model, and serial number of the firearm transferred. The NRA continued over time as people sell or bequeath their firearms. Uh, A registry of firearm transfers would become a registry of gun owners, obviously. The House will also vote on the Enhanced Background Checks Act on uh, Thursday today. Sponsored by South Carolina Representative James Clyburn, H.R. 1446 would allow the FBI to put a hold on transferring a firearm for up to 30 days rather than the three days currently allowed by law. Again, these laws only go against law-abiding citizens. This is not going to do anything to stop criminal behavior or the criminal element from obtaining firearms and doing what they will with them. This is just another cut to people who follow the law, law law-abiding citizens who are doing nothing wrong other than exercising their Second Amendment right. Why don't they focus on passing some laws that address criminal behavior and criminal activity? Or why don't they punish people who commit crimes with illegal firearms? It's hard to comprehend why they continue to attack law-abiding people and not the criminals. Instead, they continue to pass laws to make it easier for criminal behavior, easier for criminals to stay out of custody and commit more crimes, and harder 
for law-abiding people to protect themselves and just go about living their lives unencumbered. Anyway, back to this article. The NSSF Senior Vice President Lawrence Keene said Clyburn's bill would make it incumbent upon the law-abiding citizen to prove his or her innocence to the government, imagine that, to exercise their Second Amendment right to purchase a firearm instead of the government being responsible for proving an individual is prohibited. This could potentially deny a law-abiding citizen their rights for up to a month while they are saddled with the burden of proving their innocence. That's un-American, Keene said. Keene recommended focusing on adequately resourcing NICS rather than further burdening retailers and law-abiding gun owners. Yep, well, we all know that isn't going to happen. This... uh, something that's not in this article, this law would not apply to spouses that give a firearm to each other, or if you were to give a firearm to one of your kids, adult kids, family members, uh, as long as you are under the understanding that they're not going to use that uh, firearm to go commit a crime. So if you want to sell a gun, you're going to have to go to a gun dealer or become a gun dealer uh, and do the sale through them, which this would pretty much eliminate a lot of gun show people um, because they're probably not licensed firearm dealers. So you're not just going to be selling your firearm at a gun show. Although, you know, gun shows, uh, even there, they they do call in for uh, background checks before they make a sale, um, at least at most gun shows that I've been to. Um, but this would essentially eliminate that unless the person at the gun show uh, had a firearm dealer's license. Um, this means you're just not going to be able to sell your gun um, over some of these websites that exist Um And I'm sure it's going to make the process extremely expensive because these gun stores are probably going to charge you an arm and a leg to hold the gun and do the paperwork and call it in. And, you know, it's just one more thing, one more hoop we have to jump through, one more thing we got to pay for. There's all kinds of gun legislation coming down the pike that they're going to try to ram through. You know, they, they want background checks even to buy ammunition. They also want you to have to buy insurance uh, for your guns if you own firearms through the federal government for at least $800 a year. Um, They're going to try to make it just financially impossible to even own a gun. On top of all the taxes and everything else these individual states are, are putting on to firearms, Um, it's just going to be financially impossible to own a gun because they're going to come at you every which way to try to charge you and make you jump through all their little hoops to have a gun. And it appears the Republicans aren't going to stand up to this and stop it or be able to stop it. So this is our world for the next two to four years, folks. Contact your representatives. Tell them you don't support this garbage. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to the Behind the Line podcast. I hope you will subscribe to the channel so you can get regular updates. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, I hope you will also uh, like it, share it, and uh, subscribe on YouTube as well. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Anchor, Sprecher, We're on various other podcast platforms, Um, and you can find me on LinkedIn under John Washington. Again, thank you for listening. We appreciate your support.